They took them up and they walked them to the one of the holes. They told them to take the sand off, I think with, with some shovels. I don't know what I had what to do it with. And there they saw buddies. A lot, a lot of buddies. And he said we were... We were all shocked, and they told us that we need to take the bodies out. And the wood that we cut, we had to put uh, the wood and on it the bodies. The Nazis and the Lithuanian were talking about the schmattes. They didn't. It wasn't bodies of human beings. It was schmatis. Schmatis, which means uh, rugs that you wash the floor with. And it meant nothing. Like <laughs> The Jews are nothing. And uh, he said, we were stinking from the, 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 the smell of the bodies, and we ate with the hands that we worked on the bodies, and like, he said, it was, we were like animals. Like, and my father afterwards kept on washing hands all the time. Whenever you saw my father, wherever he went, whatever he did, first of all, he had to wash his hands. It was an obsession. He was cleaning all the time. He was the youngest one, my father. There were, through the time, they came to 80 people that worked. There were four women that were in the kitchen. So the, the team of workers were 84 people in those holes. And yeah. He said, you didn't have time. You were, if you said that you feel, you don't feel good or something, they took you out and they shot you. One was telling them he felt not, he doesn't feel good and he was gone. And, um, from one side, you knew you had to go on. And from the other side, like my dad said, we didn't know about Auschwitz. We didn't know about Majdanek. And all we thought is that someone will survive and tell the world what's going on, what, hap what happened here. My, my father said, we had to find a solution because we knew none of us will survive. They'll kill us. We'll be the next ones in the hole. So we had to run away. One of them, Dogim, was, uh, he was an electricity uh, technician. And he said, we must build a tunnel. That's the only way. There were about 20, I think, between 20 to 25 people that could dig. And when they decide on the day to, to run away, it was according to as much as you worked in the tunnel. That's the way the numbers were put. My father was number five. He said, after the whole day of burning the bodies, he said, we went into this tunnel. There was no air at the beginning. We were digging with the hands, with spoons we found on the bodies, with screwdriver we found on the bodies. He said, whatever we found there, they dug for three between three or three and a half months. And they went, they waited for a night where there is no moon, full dark night. And it was the 15, I think the 15 in April, when they, there was a decision to do it. 
and they told everyone. And when they went out on the other side, it was already the beginning of spring, so the leaves were dry. And the guards heard the steps on the leaves, and that's when they start shooting. So they survived 12. They wanted revenge. At least that's what my father said. He said, we felt that we're nothing. And the moment that we managed and we tricked them and we, we did the tunnel and we escaped of it, we wanted to go to the partisans. We wanted to fight. We wanted to do something. When he got to the partisans, he said the first thing they did, they pushed us on the side and they said, take off the clothes. They washed, the, they boiled water to wash us because we were stinking so much. They burned our clothes and they gave us new clothes. My father, he met my mother and he said, no way, I'm not staying here on this land, no way. And he started the runaway through, I took, it took him about eight months, and he stood on Israel Earth, in the Israeli world, in 10 of October, 45. Well, I believe no one, no human being should do anything like this to another one. There can be disagreement. We are living in a country with a lot of disagreements. But the other side is human beings. And that is something we must never forget. <laughs>